Dana, can you kind of just talk about what made you get into lacrosse when you were younger? Yeah, sure. I actually started lacrosse when I was in high school. I was a freshman in high school, and I, um, when I was younger, I started with basketball and soccer. So those were my two sports growing up. Um, and then I got into high school, one of my friends asked if I was interested in trying out for the lacrosse team. And um, I guess like pretty much because I could run, and they were starting the new program, so I decided to pick up a stick. Um, I joined a club team my sophomore year, and then my junior year I was going to tournaments, and then that's kind of just the progression. I went to a lot of camps, a lot of summer camps, and a lot of um, school year winter break camps. So um, I loved how you know physical and aggressive it was, um, even in high school, um, and even more so in the college, I guess, scene. But um, yeah, it was it just seemed like a natural progression to me. I ended up like dropping soccer and basketball just to focus on lacrosse and. Um, um, so there were a couple years in the middle where I did both, but yeah, it came out as on top for me. What attracted you to Haverford? I actually, it's a funny story. I actually was not trying to go to school. Initially, I was, I didn't think I was good enough to go to school for lacrosse. Um, I was playing with a, a club team and traveling with them, and I was being contacted by some schools. Um, but I, initially I just wanted to go to a really big school, or a bigger school, um, which is funny because I ended up at the smallest school, but um, it's because I was actually at this tournament. I was contacted by the Haverford lacrosse coach. Never heard of Haverford. Um, it's not really. I mean, so and then but my parents have heard of it, so they were like, "Oh, it's very strong academically. You should definitely look into it. It would be a really, really good place to visit." Um, so there was. I was at a tournament in Jersey, and every, the entire team, my visiting team, was going to the Jersey Shore, which is a big deal because, like, you know, we're from the West Coast and it's, you know, we're not here for that long. It was like our off day. My parents made me go visit Haverford that day. And then I kind of went through the process, talked to the coach, and the coach had seen me and, like, had contacted me, and it kind of, it was almost like it was meant to be. So even though it was, wasn't what I was looking for, like, Haverford, I came onto the campus and I immediately was like, oh, okay, fine. Like, oh, okay, fine, I'll, I guess I have to consider it because I do <laughs> feel something. And I guess I can't ignore this. So if it was, it's funny how it like worked out, but that's pro a good story for me because I do believe that it was like meant to be. So. So par parents do know best. They knew. <sighs> I, I would never admit it to them, but yeah, sure, they do know best. <laughs> yeah, not directly to them, but yeah. So, um, you know, your first year, you uh, you played in a couple games and you came off the bench. And can you kind of talk about your transition from where you are now, or where you are now as a senior to where you were as a freshman? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as a freshman, I came in. I, you know, I think everybody comes in as a freshman, and they're all, you know, they're at, we're at very strong schools. You know, they're um, getting a lot of time at their school, especially as seniors, and they come to college. And there's so many other talented young players with you um, in your class and all the other classes. And as, as a freshman, you just have so much to learn. There is nothing that could have prepared me. Um, I think I came in. I was working my butt off, but I was not there with my skill. Um, with my like stick skills, so I spent a lot of time just trying to work on my stick skills, work on my, you know, my fitness because it's at a level that you can never really understand until you're actually in it and that you're in, you're actually immersed in the, in the culture, in the fall ball, and the spring season. It's it doesn't, you don't you can't understand it until you've made it through the entire season. So I think um, my freshman year was a lot of trying to get up there physically um, and with my skills. Um, my sophomore year, you know, I was kind of like in a slump. I was working really hard and, you know, I ended up like moving around positions to try to figure out where I really could excel. And then um, my junior season, it was kind of different because I think I, um, I had a couple mental blocks definitely my sophomore year. I was in a bit of a slump, but my junior year I kind of came out with a different mindset. I had just come back from being abroad. Um, I put a lot into my work, and um, I ended up starting um, to play a couple more games my junior season. Um, but I do, I mean, like with my whole transition, I guess, from being a freshman to being a senior, um, the whole process, I realized, you know, you never, you have to work for every single thing, you know, like nothing is going to come to you, you know, whether you're, you know, no matter your grade, because teams want to win, you know, and like there's so many, there's so much depth on like on this team, that, especially that the team that we have now, there's so many good players, that young players, um, everybody, juniors, seniors, sophomores, freshmen, everybody has to work really hard uh, for their starting spot and, you know, it's just, it's taught me a lot about like just tenacity, honestly, and being resilient and being able to like be mentally strong, so it's 
taught me physical things, and it's definitely ta- taught me a lot of mental things. Um, and what has been some of your favorite parts about Haverford the school? Haverford the school? Um, let's see. I've met a lot of, I mean, this, this sounds very generic, but I've met a lot of incredible people. It's very small, um, but the, the quality of the people that you meet is actually just unparalleled. I talked to my, uh, I have two sisters, and they both went to, like, much bigger schools than I did, and um, I just feel like my experience being in a smaller environment, much more intimate, I've gotten to know people on a much more intimate level, um, and I think that they're aspirations just in general, their like interests, their the type of people that they are, the type of people that Haverford attracts is very unique. So sometimes they can be a little quirky, but they have something more to them, much more depth um, than I think I ever saw in people that I met when I, I mean, in people that I grew up with or something like that. Um, and I think they just, they want to learn more, they have much more like desire to just learn, they have much more desire um, to not only learn academically, but like just things that they're interested in. They want to pursue these other things, um, and it's just a like kind of like a drive that I guess I never that is unique to Haverford and its and its um, students. What does it mean to you to be a senior captain? Mm, to me, um, my entire class. I have seven girls in my um, senior class on the lacrosse team. And being a senior captain, honestly, it means obviously a lot that, you know, that I am put in this position and I get to act with Diana as kind of like the mouthpiece, as the liaison for like the team and Lauren and kind of um, bringing everyone together. But I do think that a lot of the leadership lies in the entire senior class because, you know, it's just Diana and I right now that are quote unquote captains, senior captains. And while that is significant, it is, we would not be able to do like, 75 or 80 percent of the things that we actually do without the help of like our our entire senior class because we are such a group of strong personalities and we have such leadership on um, different parts of the field so you know like there are girls senior um, lacrosse players who you know really command the defense and senior like players that really command the midfield and I think just like everyone together has made such a strong leadership kind of like unit less so than just being like captains I think people have really stepped up being a captain you know it's in that sense I guess it's not like it's not as significant or it's not as huge as um I would expect or I would think in like in the best way possible because I think that I share that with so many other people and I think that other you know it's not something just for me to take you know So I'm here with Brianna Robbins of the Haverford Women's Lacrosse team. And Brianna, can you kind of just talk about how you got into lacrosse when you were younger? Yeah, so I actually was always a basketball player. So I played a lot of basketball growing up. And just in middle school, I picked up lacrosse because I thought it looked fun and really fell in love with the sport and been playing ever since. So that's where my defensive roots come from are all those years of playing basketball. It just translates really well onto the lacrosse field. And I've been able to take what I've learned in that sport and really build on it, playing lacrosse. And who who were some of your major influences when you were getting into lacrosse? I don't know if I really had any major influences. I think I just really loved to play the game. So it was a lot of fun. I really loved my high school coach. She was really passionate about the sport. She really encouraged me to play at the college level. So I guess she was an influence in my decision to play here. But I think it wasn't more about the influence. It was just more about the love of the game than any specific person. And then when you were going through the process of looking at colleges and, and things of that nature, what attracted you to have for college? I wanted a school that was of high academic standards. That was my first priority. But then I knew I wanted to play sports, and I knew I wanted to play basketball, and I knew I wanted to play lacrosse. So I wanted to find a school that had those high academic standards that I could also potentially continue to play my athletics at. So when I was looking at Haverford, it just seemed like the best fit for me. It was a great school, and it had great athletic programs, so it was the perfect fit. Uh, And then you talked about your basketball, your basketball playing 
playing ability, and then uh, you know you've been playing two sports up until this year. What has that balance been like, balancing two sports and then you know balancing your academics as well? I think it's all about time management and just making the time during the day to get the work done so that when you come to practice, you can fully focus on whatever sport I was in season in. So I made a big commitment to focus on whatever sport was currently happening at the time. So in the winter, I'd totally focus on basketball. In the spring, I'd totally focus on lacrosse. And I think that just having that time management and having that commitment to the team that I was with at that moment really made the balance of the two sports manageable. Um... And there's a little bit of there's a little bit of overlap, especially last year when you got when the basketball team went on, you know, went to the NCAA tournament. Did you did you ever have to find yourself, you know, have to catch up with the cross since you were in the basketball? Was there any any time where you felt like you had to pick up your uh, your game? Yeah, it was always a little hard when I would come into lacrosse and the rest of the team had just had four weeks of preseason usually and so everyone was really sharp and they were on their A game and I felt a little rusty so I would just make sure I got extra reps on the wall, get my stick, um, get myself more comfortable with my stick skills. They were always a little rusty after coming off a of winter of not using it as much as I probably should have. Um, so it was just an adjustment t- period of, you know, getting extra fitness in, getting some extra stick work and footwork in, and trying to catch up to that level that the rest of my team was at after preseason. So it definitely was an adjustment period for a few times, but the team was really supportive of me coming back, um, and sometimes I would have to miss a few games, and they were very understanding, and Lauren's been really, um, was always really understanding with that also, and would help me, you know, work on that fitness, or this footwork, or the stick work, or what I needed to do, and was really honest about what I needed to work on to get myself back in the game as soon as possible. So, yeah, it was difficult at times, but I managed, and I worked hard, and always caught back, caught up pretty quickly. Um, and this season, uh, you couldn't play basketball because of, because of your back. Uh, what was, what was that process like, trying to get healthy with your back, and then moving into lacrosse season? Yeah, it was so unfortunate not to be able to play basketball my senior year, but I made the decision to get myself healthy because I did herniate a disc in my back, which can be serious and could have been a life um, long injury if I didn't take care of it at that point in time. So I decided in the fall that I needed to take the winter to do a physical therapy and rest. I did a lot of non-impact working out, did a lot, of, learned how to swim, did a lot of biking, um, found ways to keep myself in shape that wasn't putting pressure on my back, and eventually got healthy enough that I was able to start. Um, my first preseason with lacrosse ever, so I was able to run right at the beginning of the season, and it was even slow getting back into full speed and cutting and changing direction, but I just really listened to my body and worked with my physical therapist and made sure I was strong enough to cut and get ground balls and do everything I needed on the lacrosse field so that I didn't hurt my back now or even hopefully in the future. Um... What has been your favorite part about Haverford? Not necessarily on the court or on the field, but ne- uh, maybe a class you've taken or something like that? I think my favorite part about Haverford is the opportunities that we have here going to such a small school, but such a great school also. So it's things like just being able to play the two sports. If I was at a bigger institution, that might have been frowned upon. Or I received funding for an in- internship after my sophomore year and was able to receive um, I got a Whitehead funding that allowed me to work at a startup in Philadelphia, and that was a great experience. And if I was at a larger institution, that might have been something that I wasn't able to do. Um, and that also translates in the classroom, where if you take a class and you have a one-on-one relationship with the professor, and you can email him and ask him questions and go meet with their office hours and really get to know them on a more personal level. So I think that my favorite part about Hefford are all those little experiences and opportunities that I've had throughout my four years here that maybe I wouldn't have had if I would have chose to go somewhere else. What's been your favorite part about the campus itself? The campus itself? It's so beautiful, and I think I'm starting to just appreciate that this year, maybe because I know I'm not going to come back and live here next year, but it really is a beautiful campus, and the grounds are beautiful and the buildings are beautiful and I think that just walking around the other day when it was nice out everyone was sitting outside and the lawn chairs and people are running around on the fields it makes you really appreciate what we have here. 
Is there one memory from women's lacrosse that stands out above the rest? I think when, well, actually, I think the win against Gettysburg this season now is going to always be a memory that stands above everything in my head. And just coming back from uh, eight to one, we were down eight to one, and coming back and winning in overtime, I think that moment will be a feeling that I never forget looking back on my four years playing here. And then uh, just wrapping up, uh, just one final question is, uh, do you have any plans after school or what's kind of the, you know, your thought process as you're getting ready to pick up that diploma? Yeah, so I actually am very fortunate. I got an internship last summer at BlackRock, the asset management company, and was offered a full-time job there. So I will be joining their analyst program um, next fall. So I'm really excited about that, really excited about what I did last summer and continuing to learn about the finance industry and go join all my intern friends at BlackRock. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. So I will start working there in August.